from the cold theaters of the world. This is Circuit Breaker. Brought to you by the entertainment site AwardCircuit.com. An in-depth chat on film, television, and all the award shows that need predicting. Here's your host, Clayton Davis. Hello, readers, and welcome to Circuit Breaker, brought to you by the entertainment website AwardCircuit.com. I'm your editor chief and owner, Clayton Davis. Here today on March 22nd, 2020, time of recording is 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and this is officially episode 180 here today. We're going to do 180 today. Uh, Here today with Joey. Greetings from the wasteland. Mark Johnson. Hi, everyone. That's it. Others are, don't know where they are. Quarantine, dead, don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? The zombie apocalypse has begun. That's true. Yep. Um, all right. I think it's always good to start with. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, little in between called the extras, Circuit Breaker of the Extras, that have been going on this week. The video uh, hangouts, and those are going to continue. Those are not official Circuit Breaker episodes, they're just part of the Circuit Breaker Media Network. So there's technicality there. But, uh, Joey, how are you doing in the land of make believe? Oh, it's, it's a joy. I find myself without new movies to watch. And that's a place I have not found myself in in like 20 years. There are so many new movies to watch. Beyond that's, that, that, that's to leave impossible. my house for it. There's a, that's, there's a, that's a, there's an a, impossible a, statement. There are plenty no, of new movies in terms to of, watch. In terms of new release movies, I'd seen all the ones coming out already. You've seen every single VOD release that's out there. That sounds, the new ones that, was, <laughs> that, that were provided that to me? Yes. Feasible at all. Though there were three or four coming out last week, and I had seen them all previously, yes. So every single movie that's come out in 2020, you've seen every single one of them. I'm not talking. I'm saying new release, not previous releases. <laughs> God, <sighs> Joey's one day gonna. Be, and yeah, I've be seen a, a lot of be, them. Believe it or not, I'm at like I'm at like 82 for the year. I've seen most of them, so it's not. Gonna I mean, be. that's that's a lot. Yeah. yeah, I've seen I've seen maybe like four or five from 2020. We were debating whether Mark could come up with a top five list. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I think I'm at four, honestly. Uh, Mark, what are you doing? Yeah, I've been just uh, binge watching Goliath on Amazon. I don't know if you guys have seen that show, but it's it's not bad. Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting me through. It's getting me through some of the isolation. I, um, on that, and then also kind of finishing up Shits Creek on Netflix. Mm. So with get, nothing get, but time get, on your hands. No get movies. ready for the maybe future movie that comes. Yeah, I was real <laughs> excited to see that. Yeah. yeah, maybe one day we'll get a future movie out of it. Yep. Um, on this side, uh, New Jersey, as of yesterday's under mandatory quarantine, it's going to be great by great. I mean, it's the same as it was in yeah. the last few days. The same you um, were doing for the last week. Yep. Um, I'm getting cabin fever. I think already it's already <laughs> k- k- kicking in. Um, I do go for drive sometimes. Watch the shining. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, yesterday, uh, if anyone was watching social media i watched the first two john wicks for the first time and i like john wick one and john wick two is ridiculous yeah it's all garbage to me redonkulous it is mark and he still hasn't seen Casablanca. (laughs) like clayton come on that's fine it's my thing though i'll watch it eventually I'll, I'll, i'll watch it when i get close to my deathbed that's when i'll throw it out there what an asshole when i when i know it's coming towards the end i'll be like Last movie I'm ever going to watch in my life is Casablanca. I'm going to watch it, <laughs> and then I'm going to go. And then it's going to be like, he watched Casablanca before he, before he went. And he probably hated it because he's a joyless he, bastard. He probably hated it. Yeah. Man. That's what's going to be terrible is if I just like, that was garbage. You guys it's suck. Not the, it's not that he's going to die right afterwards. That someone will kill him right afterwards because The movie's what pushes me over the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else have I seen? Uh, I saw the second Jumanji with Sophia. Uh, the next level, and I actually thought it was kind of fun. It was good, and I saw. Oh, uh, I showed Sophia Titanic for the first time the other day. What did she think? She liked it. She didn't. Cr- cr- first of all, Jessica cried again. I'm gonna say that low because I know everyone can hear me now because everyone's here <laughs> in the house. But Jessica, <laughs> Jessica cried again. Like it was the first time, and I was like, "What the hell are you crying for?" Like we know what happens, and <laughs> and Sophia cried none. She was like, "Oh, okay." She the, the only time she ever showed any emotion, she went "Aw" when the baby's in the water. Literally, that's it. Any other time, <laughs> she was just watching. 
She just saw Leo was like, fuck him. Can I also just say, my God, it is brought home. Even, this is the first time I've seen it front to back, like in one sitting and probably, I don't know, like 10 or so years. Maybe more than that. Because I don't know but how many people the, have actually sat and watched Titanic in front to back in, in recent when memory. When the, when the 3D re-release came out, my ex dragged me to see it. No. Um, yeah. I actually, it's funny. I actually have the 3D uh, Blu-ray, which is which I don't have a 3D TV because... Who has that anymore? Um, but anyway, yeah. so I was uh, I was watching it, and it's uh, first time uh, in a long time. And front to back, my God, Rose is a garbage human being, garbage, like terrible person, <laughs> like no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Ooh. Like she is really a piece of shit. Like I hate her, and I yeah, I like. I mean, I love Kate Winslet because she is perfect in herself, but. Like, if it wasn't played by Kate Winslet, I wasn't, like, secretly in love with Kate Winslet, or not secret, um, I would have, re- I've really, I would have really hated it so much more. But, uh, you know, what actually came through a lot more weirdly this time, Gloria Stewart's performance. All right. Like, like, I was, because, you know, as I grown up, I always thought her and Kim Basinger, quite frankly, I always thought their two, like, head-to-head matchup, that Oscar race was a little, like, unwarranted, because I kind of always thought like both of them were kind of nothing performances yeah. um but gloria stewart's i think i argue maybe the best performance in the in the movie and i don't think billy zane's what as, about billy zane i don't no? think i don't think he's that bad like it's, I, so I, I, think I, he's I, fine I, I asked twitter i was like could, could uh sophia you know obviously like trying to make conversation with me and this time so she's she's like she's like daddy did this win best picture i was like yeah she's like did, did uh did that guy with with the black hair get nominated and i was like no she was like why and i was like i don't know so then i asked twitter and i was like guys do we think billy zane deserved an oscar nomination and it seems pretty split some people think he's ridiculous in the movie mm-hmm. i don't think he's ridiculous i think i think it's, it's a ridiculous script like the dialogue is just got awful but well, welcome to james cameron I know, but I actually think uh, I actually think he does well with what he has. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a because yeah, he writes he, it himself. Yeah, he comes he, up with his garbage, but he, he makes it good. And he's a and he's a villain. He is a quintessential villain. Yeah, he's he's good. I think the only really poor performance in it, and maybe it is also the script. And I hate saying this because I love him, but Bill Paxton's character always oh my, thought, was can, so cheesy. Can I? Can I? Okay, because I wanted to tweet this out. There's literally the line when he's talking to Susie Amos towards the end. He's like, "All these years I thought of nothing but Titanic, and I never got her. I never let her in. And I don't know what the hell he's talking <laughs> about." I was like, "What does that mean?" <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. If that's just like, and you know, when Cameron wrote that line, he was like, "I got to stop for a second. That's going to be the best thing to write today. Yeah, Take well, a break, it, it, it enjoy crazy. it, come back tomorrow. I think he gave it to her because gave it to her because he's probably like I'm secretly sleeping with Susie Amos, so I need to be able to like give her some justification. <laughs> he just put, this just puts code words in all the time. I know. If yeah, you watch this movie carefully. Yeah, like I, I just I don't get the line. There are so many things. I was like, what? Um, and I love me some Kathy Bates. It's good to have her in it. But yeah, that was that was a little bit of my week. But I'm gonna watch so much just like randomness. This week, I'm just. You need to start watching really not Oscar movies and make sure that your daughter still asks you, "Dad, did this win Best Picture?" Mm -hmm. Oh, I've also been watching like an ungodly amount of the pitch meetings uh, that are part of Screen Rant by Ryan George, and uh, chances are. You, Mark, have never heard of it nor seen it, but go to Mark, YouTube. Mark, it's on the internet. Yeah, it's on the internet. Uh, Mark, mm-hmm. when, when when we're done with this, go to uh, YouTube.com. Okay. And you're going to type right. in uh, pitch meetings, and it's on screen oh, rant. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like Honest Trailers, but it's yeah. the same guy talking to himself as both the writer. Okay. And you will just adore it, especially any <laughs> of the ones that have to do with Michael Bay movies. You're going to oh, just good. adore them. Good. Yeah. All right. But it's, it's he's good. So the Ryan George uh, on Twitter, you should follow him. He is funny, and he's Canadian. Didn't know. Felt like that was a surprise to me. Mark's gonna finish all the Michael Bay movies while he's under uh, quarantine. Yeah. Hard pass. <sighs> yeah. Hard passing is tight. That's also something that he says often. <laughs> in his, his stuff. Um. Okay. Uh. We got a lot of questions, and a lot of them have been bulked around with uh, the Circuit Breaker Extras episodes, but we're going to do it anyway, because, you know, Mark hasn't talked. Mark, are you going to do one? Are you going to be on video this week? 
Um, it depends because we are uh, we transitioned our work from uh, home from the office, so it's been kind of chaotic last week, and I'm not sure if that'll extend to this week. But if you have one during my lunch hour, um, they like typically are during lunch hours. Yeah. yeah. Do, okay. do you guys mind if I eat on camera though? Because I, I mean, you know, don't, as, as, I don't as, starve as long as you're not ungodly. <laughs> chewing with their mouth I love that okay. at a time where Mark will liter- could literally be working in his kitchen next to his refrigerator, he still is like, <laughs> "I'm going to eat during this, not when I'm being paid." Yeah. Well, I mean, I got, I got to eat. I, you know, I'm in yeah. the office all day. I get it. I get it. All I'm right. Sure, you are. Uh, Luke, Luke McGowan <laughs> got some stuff for us. Hello, Luke. Uh, question: How has time validated the following wins from the 2000s? Do they feel better, worse, or do we need more time to feel them out? It's actually a good question. I like questions like this. Mm-hmm. So he's going to yeah. ask, starting with Sean Penn and Milk. All so right. does it feel better? Has it gotten worse, or we need more time to feel it out? I think it feels about. I'm, I'm going to go about this uh, secret option number four. I think it feels about the same. I like it for the time. I think it was deserved. I don't think it feels all timer, but it is a very good win. What year is that? 2004. That was the year. Mickey, 2000, Mickey Rourke. It's, it's Mickey Rourke year. Richard Jenkins, Brad Pitt, Curious Case, Benjamin Button. That's 2008. Oh, and Frank Langella. Yeah, Frank Langella year. Yeah. I still wish Mickey Rourke could have won. Exactly. That's that's the but, main but, thing. But, like but, a- but 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 as a so as a performance itself, and then and then we can compare it obviously to winners. But as a performance itself, do you think it's like a bad winner? I think be, I think because he already had one, it feels it doesn't if, feel nice. Yeah, yeah. And I just uh, yeah. it's one of those movies I haven't gone back to since two thousand eight. I I did so I prefer this performance to his uh, win wise. This is the preferred one of Sean Penn, but mm, okay. both times I was deep deep in the bag for the person he lost to. So oh. even though I would normally be like, "Oh, cool, Sean Penn won," it was so, like, "God damn it!" So so kind of in your world, like in the Joey world. Sean Penn doesn't have an Oscar, which is fine yeah. to say, but like in my, just, in my world, yeah. yeah, he's he's one of those people you assume is like, oh, they're just gonna give it to him one time because he it, had the misfortune well, of I, losing to one and dones. I'll be instead honest, of beating them, yeah, and 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 listen, I, I like in both Sean Penn's wins, he's my personal winner of that year. So let me yeah. just I'm gonna preface this with that. However, I can totally understand why people would feel for someone else in his lineup because his top three performances of his career, he's gone in. On, on a almost historic best actor lineup, like mm-hmm. with competition in there. So, in the year uh, Mr. Griver, I mean, he beat Bill Murray. That's who you were referring to on someone that yep. Joey was all in for. But that is one of the great best actor lineups because that's Johnny Depp, Ben Kingsley, and Jude Law. And I don't think there's not a bad person in that lineup. That is baller, baller, baller lineup. Then we get into the Milk Year, right? Uh, I, I'm a big fan of, of Rourke, and I'm a big fan of Langella, and I think Jenkins is pretty good. I think his movie isn't as good as he is, but I think he's good. And Brad Pitt's nominated for the wrong movie because Burn After Reading should be down and supporting, but whatever. So there's that. But again, a good – like him and Rourke being the one, too, was a really good matchup to, yeah. to watch. And then the other third I was – the other – the third performance I was referring to was Dead Man Walking because I think he is fantastic in Dead, Dead Man Walking. However, yeah. going taking that from Nicolas Cage is almost it, it is not responsible no. by any means. It is. It is I, funny. Those three films are up against. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. You want to laugh? Those well, the, those and, three and, performances. And that's and wait. Uh, just, just the response, to Mark, yeah, and that, and I think that's fine, Mark. That like it, do, is because you think Nicolas Cage is bad, or you just think Sean Penn's better. I think Sean Penn's better, and I don't think Nicolas Cage is that great, and I'm not a fan of Leaving Las Vegas. So oh, I'm a little, I'm well, a little that, that, that oh, makes my next sentence even know, more right? interesting because I was about to say right those three performances: Nicolas Cage that he lost to, and the ones that he beat, Mickey Rourke and Bill Murray, are three of my top ten performances of all time. Mm, yeah. So he just goes up against when he's nominated. You know, there's he an just goes up against some big, yeah, someone I'm, yeah. Yeah, I will say I, I I the only performance of his I really like. I'm always like er that he did was a uh, sweet and low down. I don't get that. I don't like. First of all, I don't really like the movie, and I I like, I like he is for me he is the clear five in that lineup. That's the year of Kevin Spacey, Russell Crowe, Richard Farnsworth, and Denzel Washington. Like Penn is yeah. number five and like a distant number five because that's yeah, also I like, I like the story. The movie more than I like his performance. 
but but again that's an historic best actor yeah. lineup like he's going up again so I think that's just interesting all right let's go to because he has a few more here um next up tilda swit and michael clayton oh hell yeah absolutely <sighs> i mean i would probably be closer to clayton yeah i don't was that this 2005 right 2007 rather but, yeah, mm-hmm. that's the the year. So here, this Which is great. I think, believe it or not, I think she benefited from a weak lineup in general. Yes, I agree. Um, I, I think Cape Blan- I think Cape Blanchett is is great. I think Amy Ryan's great. I think mm-hmm. Amy Ryan should should have won out of that lineup. Um, Same. I, I like the Ruby D got an Oscar nomination in her lifetime before she went, so I have to appreciate that. Um, and, and I'm actually not big on Sarah Ronan and Atonement, even though I love Atonement, and I think Vanessa Redgrave needs to be there instead. But in re- at the time, up until maybe about two, three years ago, I've been very nothing about the Tilda Swinton performance. I think it is aging slightly better, but I think Michael Clayton as a whole is aging better with me. I love Michael Clayton. I think there's something to be said for, like, it's her least weird performance, but it shows that, like, if you put her in a role that you would normally not think to cast her in, she can still be great. Like, it's, it doesn't do a whole lot for me, but I I can't argue with the win just because, like, it's nice that she has an Oscar. Like, she's not but usually it, someone also, that would win. I, w- I would also say that Tilda, like, and there's something to be said, I think what you just said, like, it's her least weird. It's also, like, the most un-Tilda Swinton movie slash performance that she's ever done. Exactly. Because so, when I think of Tilda Swinton, like, 50 years from now, I don't know if Michael Clayton's going to come to my head. Like, it's going to come probably naturally. No. Remember, like, she won an Oscar for it. But when I think about her, I'm not going to think about that type. I'm, like, I'm going to think about her a lot in Wes Anderson movies. I'm going to think about her. <laughs> sure. I'm going to think about her and we need to talk about Kevin. I'm going to think about her and Burn After Reading for crying out loud. And, you know, that's like, uh, like I'm going to think of her in Trainwreck even probably before uh, yes before i think about like some of some of the other stuff so i yeah like it's, and then obviously you go into like i think really quintessential uh tilda swain which is like i am love i am uh, love is her best yeah i am love is a, is a great tilda swain um that's her best i think so of her uh, adaptation oh my god i forgot that she's in vanilla sky i don't remember her in that uh the deep end is also very good that she's good i think of her in the beach too like there's just so many tilda swintons that come to my head before michael clayton Mm. For me, I think what comes first is like you mentioned the Wes Anderson films. Yeah, uh, like especially I think Moonrise Kingdom is, is probably the one. Yeah, uh, or maybe or maybe um, Great Budapest. Great Budapest. But I think Michael Michael Clayton for me is right after that, just because. And, and I, I I'm going to be biased on that one. I think for life because I that was one of my early Gutsy good calls. calls in, uh, yeah, and can, oh, uh, can I just share so something? That, that is actually that, that is the last I think. First of all, yeah, first of all, that's the last Oscar season before Oscar Igloo turned into a ward circuit. And yeah. it was the last gutsy call by uh, Oscar Igloo founder Johnny Alba. He called Tilda Swinton's win that year. And I was like, I was actually a little proud of him. I was like, because I thought he was like preposterous to think that Tilda Swinton was going to win the Oscar. And then she did. Yeah. I was really proud of him. Uh, I wonder what Johnny Alba's doing right now. Hope he's safe. Johnny, I don't know if he's self quarantine. I mean, yeah, but if he's still in, I don't know if he's still in Portugal or not. Yeah. Uh, but if you're listening, Johnny, love you, man. Miss you. Email me. Say hello. Someone find him. Hmm. Someone find Johnny Alba. Mark, before find, we Mark, do. Mark, see if he has insurance. <laughs> With <laughs> all state. I'm, I'm not allowed to do that. So. Yeah. Wait, um, just uh, <laughs> put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> he's not saying full, he has full it. Disclosure. He's saying he's not allowed to. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah. he's so nervous now. Um, <laughs> uh, next For on, legal purposes, he's never done that. Yeah. Like, never uh, uh, next on the docket, Alan Arkin for Little Miss Sunshine. Um, uh, it's, it's, it, I look at no. him in a better but very similar way. I look at James Coburn's win, and I will always look at kind of that. Like yeah. it was a career win. The performance itself is is fine. There are better performances in his movie, let alone the lineup, and that's kind of it. But I'm but again, I'm just kind of glad Alan Arkin got his due at some point. However, I kind of wish he had yeah. lost for that because then he would have been the clear winner for Argo, and I think we could have just been like whatever yeah. and just let him take. I think it. we've been all right with that. Yeah, yeah. 
I would like to have seen, and I know he wasn't nominated, but and I still kind of scratch my head on that. But I would like to have seen Alec Baldwin win that year for Departed. I, I really, I really enjoyed his performance. Do you, yeah, do you think he's the best in the movie? I think he's oh, the second best in the guy? movie. Oh, the, oh, the uh, I think guys? he's the third best. I'll go third best in the movie, but uh, for supporting, who? I think he's the sec- second best behind Nicholson for supporting. But that's Leo's. You, movie, you think man. he's Leo's? Oh, wait, you think he's better than Wahlberg? Yeah, I do. Oh. I, I was shocked Wahlberg got the nomination. Oh he, my god! I would have. I, I would have put Damon ahead of him. I would have put a few. It's one, I was it, shocked when he got the nomination because I thought Nicholson was getting. Yeah. The well, I same. Yeah. Well, same. I, it was one of the. It's one of the few times in Oscar history that Oscar actually went purist and went actually chose the best performance. I felt like of the oh, shoot. supporting guy because I because I think and, and I don't want to say bad, but. Nicholson's rough in The Departed. I think he's actually one of the rougher parts of the movie. Oh, he's just doing Nicholson. He's you're Jack. Yeah, he's, 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 I, think he's like, I, I think he's Jack turned up. <laughs> I think. Yeah, but I think the whole movie is turned up that he no, he, fixed, true. he fits for that. The movie is extreme, but, so he's but extreme. But that's, that's weird. But that's yes, the whole movie's turned up, but everyone seems to be turned up like in a in in a way that suits them, like Wahlberg, DiCaprio, even Damon. Like Damon actually I think is way better in the movie than people give him credit yeah, for. Yeah, great. Oh no, uh, I, I yeah. think everyone is fantastic. I just yeah. I tend to put Nicholson I, higher than you. Yeah. Can I take back Can I take back what I said cuz I forgot one of my favorite supporting performances ever mm-hmm. is that year and that's jackie earl, earl haley, haley little, and yeah. little Alan, women, yeah. and little children yeah oh, alan, jackie alan, haley and little women there you go yeah and little women yeah, yeah. Little women. <laughs> yeah. alan arkin he, he has, played joe alan arkin yeah. has jackie earl haley's oscar yeah he does he oh does. my god he was so good in that yeah and and i know some people would be like oh eddie he has eddie murphy's and he might have eddie murphy's too alan Man. arkin or eddie murphy actually i think i would choose eddie murphy uh, i would the choose two. arkin it's a it's a pass i would probably those. choose haley over arkin Haley's definitely the best of the lineup. Jaiman Untu's the five of the lineup because I I am yeah. not big on Blood Diamond. Me um, either. And I think I think I think Wahlberg's actually my personal two of the lineup. I think I think it would be Haley, Wahlberg, Murphy, Arkin, and then Untu. Haley, Arkin, Wahlberg, Murphy, Untu. Yeah. Can, can I, I also just five. say that I and just because the way Oscar treats minority acting nominees not well. yeah not well at all i i am still shocked that jaiman untu has two oscar nominations in his lifetime like yeah. like because his first one was so surprising it was at it was a wtf one and then his second one kind of felt like it came out of nowhere but then yeah. but then you follow the leo trajectory of supporting actor then it makes sense like in, in, in a hindsight. year of 10 in a year of 10 blood diamond is the best picture nominee Oh yeah, I I, I yeah. I, yeah, I would I would argue it was like number six probably. Yeah, like, no, it's, in that, it's six, in it's six or seven. Yeah, well, last King of Scotland might have slipped in ahead of it. Yeah, um, and then like and even like it also you have to look at he and even though the movie did as well as it did, Jaiman Untsu probably just edged out Brad Pitt for Babel. Yeah, too, and that was big. All right, uh, he's got more here. Uh, Rachel Vice, the constant gardener. Feels the same, yes. and I think it's a I good. It. And I think it's a good win. Yeah, sure. I'm with you. Because I don't think, and I know it's going to feel blasphemous because I know some people love because people love Brokeback Mountain and everything, and people will say that you know it, it's it belonged to Michelle Williams. Um, I think if I was if I my personal winner of the lineup is probably Amy Adams for Junebug because I think she's fantastic. And Junebug, but if yes. not if not Amy, I think it's okay that it's Rachel. I think Rachel's a really really good performance. Uh, I mean, the real winner wasn't nominated, and that was Maria Bello. So let's yes. clear let's clear that up. <laughs> really, yes, a history of violence. History, 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 history of history violence. violence. Okay, yeah. So such, yeah, such, such, she's amazing. The cooler also. Yeah, Ryan McQuaid on one of our circuit extras this week said that History of Violence is not a good movie, and I. Almost had a heart cut, attack. Did you cut off his feed immediately? Oh my! No, I stepped away from the video. I st- in the, you watch the video. I step away and like grab a bongo and start banging the bongo because I. Couldn't, I was about to say, do we just hear off screen something? Something I could breaks not off focus. screen. Could not focus. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, Amy Adams, I think is great. Rachel Weisz is great. Marie Bello's missing. Um, I think Tandy Newton, I think, is missing too because she's great in Crash. Oh God, she's great in Crash. 
I I can't stand the Catherine Keener nomination for Capote. It should be for Into the it's, Wild because it's such a nothing performance. It's what it's who she plays and not what she does. And I hate and I love Capote so much, but come on now. Yeah, I I don't like that performance or that movie. Capote. Yeah, it just I like Philip Seymour Hoffman in it, but I just oh, nothing about so the movie particularly did it for me. I was oh, like, I, can't, I, can't, I can't stand you, Joey. I know it's a re- yeah. it's a really cold movie. I will get that. Like it's hard to like embrace, <laughs> yeah. but damn, I love that movie. I'm I, I love I'm Capote. Surprised. Yeah, Capote I loved great. it. I don't know. I want. I I didn't. You should go re- I, revisit that one. I will, but I just okay. didn't, I like his performance a lot, and I, I like the idea of a Truman Capote movie. I just, mm. Both of them was the other one. Infamous didn't do much for me either. I just, well, inf- well, I Infamous guess, is garbage. That's yeah, why. But I mean, they're two different yeah. ways of trying yeah. to make a movie about that character, and neither one. Oh no! Set it's, my world it, on what what's really good about Capote in that oh, I L it'll always baffle me to the core because he's in my personal lineup that year. How people just pass on Clifton Collins Jr. because he right, is. Right. Yeah, absolutely. M- magnificent. Magnificent in that movie. And it's so, so, so good. Um, next on his lineup is Nicole Kidman for The Hours. The The performance, I think, is borderline an all-timer. Ooh. She's in wow. it. She's, again, in an historic lineup. That lineup of Best Actress is... Amazing. That's Diane Lane, Julianne Moore for Far From Heaven, Renee Zellweger, and Salma Hayek. Not, not a bad person in that lineup for me. I have always struggled with what I believe Nicole Kidman actually is leader supporting in the hours. And I right. can't, and I can't, yeah. and, I, and I can never come to a definitive answer. That's an ensemble more than anything. It's kind it, of like Spotlight. It kind of is, would, or it's kind of three, no lead. or it's three leads, you know? Because yeah. this is the thing, because, because, yeah. This is where I struggle greatly. It's like sometimes I say, you know, it's it's it's. Th- I sometimes say, yeah, it could be an ensemble, but then I, my personal supporting actor winner that year is Ed Harris for the hours, and yeah. he is clearly supporting. But is but then I then I start comparing him. Like, does he feel the same supporting as if I said Nicole Kidman was supporting, and then it doesn't feel right in my head. So that's why I keep going back and forth. So in, in ways I think it, I, like I do, it's it's the one time that I've category frauded in my personal lineups just because I couldn't figure it out because I've separated yeah. Nicole Kidman and Julianne Moore in the hours and they shouldn't be. They need to be in the same category, but I just can't figure it out. But how, how are you guys on that on that winner? Do anyone else you prefer? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, Diane Lane, I prefer in that lineup. She, she's great. She used to be, I think she used to be my answer when I, like, at the time. And I think over time I've settled that, of that lineup, it's Nicole. But Renee Zellweger still also, like, holds up and gets better over time. I'd actually argue, I think the internet answer is probably Julianne Moore, Far From Heaven, because that is a beloved yeah. performance in film Twitter. Yeah, I think so. But I, yeah. but I, that performance, but, oh, well, Sama Hikes. I think Julianne Moore is probably the one that has aged the least of the five with me, like in terms of getting better over time. Her movie's gotten better to me, but her performance, I think, is good. Great. Because she's great. She's a great actress, but I don't think I've ever gotten like so much more from it. But maybe I have to revisit it. Who knows? Someone's going to curse me out in the comment section. Probably. Uh, for last sure. one, last one is uh, Reese Witherspoon. He puts in parentheses. This one I'm particularly interested in. The general consensus seems to be that it uh, seems to have been that Huffman should have won, but the conversation has very much changed around that role and actress now. So that's the walk the line year. Yeah. Um, I think she's my personal winner that year. If I look back correctly. I think she is just because it's not my favorite yeah. lineup. It, it's it's a pretty shitty lineup. Kira Knightley's yeah. the two, I think, of like yes. quality. I never really got the Felicity, Felicity Huffman, even at the time. She's fine. Like it's a challenging role, but yeah, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. She shouldn't have played the role, <laughs> and it's and yeah. It, now it, now it would not fly. It, it would not fly now. And now that she's, you know, whatever she's doing. Uh, where are you, Mark, on that? 
2005. Hello? Yeah, you, yeah, I, you, you were probably on mute. Out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always afraid to be yeah. the first to jump in. Good. Yeah, because sometimes it's just like a hot second and it yeah. comes back. But uh, oh, now Mark came out. Hello? Yeah, no, Mark? I have to mute. Okay. I, I'm here. I had to mute because my son came in the damn room. Like yeah. He knows he's not supposed to. Ooh. There you go. All right, then. Continue. Reese Witherspoon. Walk the line. Yes. I don't remember hating it. No, she's fine. I just, she's she's, she's against Charlize Theron, Felicity Huffman, Judy Dench, and Kira Knightley. It's a bad lineup. Yeah, See, it's a bad lineup. The real I'm sure win- there's something better. The real oh, there's a real winner of that year. It just it, it, she wasn't nominated. Her name is Joan Allen in the Upside of Anger. Yep, it's a good one. Yep, and uh, I, I do I also, do wonder if she would have had a better chance if she actually got in. If she might have been able. Joan to Allen. Yeah, I think her movie. I, I think if her movie came out later in the year, I think she would have fared better yeah. i will say also that's just a bad year for that's a bad year for lead actresses i'm looking through that yeah yeah it's, it's a it, yeah it's a I mean, lot of good supporting but not a lot of good lead yeah i will say also um underrated performance and i think underrated movie the movie's aged better with me uh tony collette in, in her shoes sure yeah. i like that one I, I, that's karen I, diaz and, and uh yeah, tony collette and shirley, shirley mcclain yeah yeah that was yeah. a good one it's been like a Curtis Hanson movie. Know. Like it's it's yeah. it's it's yeah. like it's definitely it's a little bloated. I go the like people think it's long, and I think you're right. You know, it's two hours and ten minutes. Um, but it's 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 good. Like it's it's it has a lot of great things about it. And Tony Collette is uh, she's great in everything. But I also play in my head also that like Tony Collette. I mean, Jim, talking about Jaime Untu has two Oscar nominations. Tony Collette has one, and her one was a shocker WTF. If that didn't happen, in which, by the way, which, funny enough, it was, she took Cameron Diaz as probably one best shot at an Oscar nomination, and, and or one of her two best in her lifetime. But if Tony Collette hadn't snatched up from Cameron Diaz, we'd still be trying to get her one today. I'm, I'm just thinking about Curtis Hansen movies now. Ugh. I wonder what he'd be what he'd be making now. Um, I don't know the coronavirus movie. Maybe. Who What's your you favorite know? Curtis Hanson? Uh, I mean, you gotta say L.A. Confidential, I think. But I think yeah, my, not, not. my my secret real answer is the hand that rocks the cradle. <laughs> I get that's not even a secret. I'm not a huge uh, L.A. Confidential fan. I oh. I don't know what my favorite of his is necessarily, but underrated that nobody likes but me is Lucky You. The uh, Eric mm, Bana yeah. gambling movie that Eric Roth wrote. Robert Downey Jr. has a really good supporting role in that movie. It's good. Yeah, another good one that was on actually last night. I was watching a little bit of uh, The River Wild. The River Wild's awesome. Mm. Mark, do you love The River Wild? I was figure you did. Eh, no? It's all right. It's all right. Oh, you know what? I was watching with Sophia. I was watching some trailers uh, the other day because we were trying to figure out like what movies like she can watch because I want to. Because I'm using this time to my advantage. I'm like, I'm gonna show you some stuff that like. You're like I'm I'm homeschooling you. Yeah, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna get her in some stuff, and um, I showed her the trailer for Legends of the Fall, and she oh got so excited. Like she was like, oh, yes. that she was like, oh, this God. looks good. And I was like, yeah. And then we saw, uh, and, then, and, and then right after it, because like, you know, some of YouTube just goes to a next trailer. It went to interview with the vampire, which is the same year. She was like, oh, I want to see that. I was like, you cannot see that. Yet. <laughs> uh, but I was like, I was, like, I can't wait for you to see it because interview with the vampire is also awesome. But you know, it is what it is. A little, a little ways away there. Yeah. Um, Ryan has some cinephile showdowns for, for us. Manic Pixie Dream Boy Chris's top ten versus twenty nineteen versus uh twenty nineteen versus his twenty eighteen. So this is Chris James's top ten and we're doing I uh Can't wait for Mark to struggle with this one. Oh he is. Uh first one, Parasite or the favorite? Parasite. 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 Uh Marriage Story or Black Klansman? Oh, uh, smidge Black Klansman, smidge Black Klan, Black Klansman, not by a ton. They're both amazing. Yeah, I go. I think I go Black Klansman as well. The farewell, or can you ever forgive me? Farewell, kind of by a lot. Uh, for me, it's the opposite for mm. by a lot. They're about the same. I'll go. Can you ever forgive me a little bit? Uh, Little Women or Star is Born? Star is Born, actually. Star, Star is Born by the grandest of canyons. Yeah, same. Uncut gems, or if Beale Street could talk. I mean, Beale Street oh, by like eons, but, but but Uncut Gems is good. But Beale Street I, is an all timer. 
I think I go uncut. I know because you're. I go. I go uncut as well. You two are monsters. Her smell. <laughs> her smell or Paddington two. I've never seen Paddington two. Oh, God, I haven't seen Paddington two either. Abstain. I've seen Paddington two, but I haven't seen her smell. And well, Paddington two is probably the most overrated film of the time. <laughs> yeah, I knew the it. fact that I people. The it. fact that people had that in their top. 10, the fact that that was 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Hustlers or Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Spider Verse by a Spider-Man. lot. Spider- by a lot. Spider Verse. Yeah. Spider Verse rocks. Pain and Glory or Shoplifters. Pain and Glory. I didn't see Pain and Glory yet. Oh. Pain Did and you glory. not? Oh, you. Oh, you didn't go to tell you. I'm ride. not a huge Almada Almada fan. Wait. Do you, do you not like Volver? Uh, it was okay. Oh, Volver. I'm not. Great. I mean, I, none of his films have really hit me. Mm. I suspect you'll think I the same. Not, not talk to her. No. Well. Your monster. I not, think you're gonna literally think, none. You're gonna think Banderas is good and think the movie is fine. Who's good? Actually, you know what? There is one. I think it's on Maldivar. Did, did um, what's the movie about that Banderas like plays around with skin a little bit? The skin, the skin, the skin I, I live, live in. in. Yeah, is that Maldivar? Yeah, 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 I like. I like that one. That's probably my favorite. Same. Mm. Yeah. Because we don't like Almodovar. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I can't even say. His what name. was your answer, Joe? Um, it's it's Almodovar, but it's not by much. The Irishman or Suspiria? The Irishman. The Irishman by yeah, the entire not, length of that movie. Yeah, not even, it's not even close. I did not like Suspiria at all. And my favorite here, Portrait of a Lady on Fire or Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, this is this is the Chris James list. Uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Yes. Yeah, Portrait. Uh, yes. And then he has some for absolutely... No reason whatsoever. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chess, or The Departed. I mean, Ryan. Well, well only one's a good movie, so The Departed. Yeah, Stop it. The Departed. Uh, Harry Potter right. and the Goblet of Fire or Crash? Oh, my God. I've only seen one, and I hate the one I've seen. Uh, it's Crash. Uh, it's Goblet, crash of, Goblet of Fire is the last one, I've, the last Harry Potter I watched. Yeah, uh, Goblet of Fire is good. That's one of the better ones. That's what, I, that, that's that's what everyone told me. They said better. if you can, if you, if you're, if you're gonna make the turn and become Harry Potter lover, get up to the Goblet of Fire, and that's what's gonna hook you. Or if you're not into it, then you should abandon ship. Yeah. And then I was just like, it's fine, and I abandon ship. Yeah. Uh, Shrek Two or Million Dollar Baby? Uh, million Dollar Baby. Million Dollar Baby. Yeah, Million Dollar Baby. But Shrek Two is Shrek a great. really good animated yeah, really, sequel. Yeah. Yeah. Mark. Yeah, for it's million dollar baby fight. Oh. Uh, Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers or Chicago? Chicago, but it's close. Chicago, not close. Two Towers. Two Towers is great though. Any any Lord of the Rings film ahead of anything? Really? You'll say two ta- the, so Two yeah. Towers over yeah. Chicago? Yes. Is Two Towers your number one of that year? Uh, I believe so. Oh God. Mark Two Towers or La La Land? Ooh, Joey, come on now. Yeah, I, I'd like to know this answer, too. <laughs> it's two towers. Oh, good. Oh, my God. Nerd. Uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's and yeah, Stone. And yeah, oh. I had to look, but just to answer your question, I had two towers, one, pianist, two, Chicago, three. Oh, where's the hours? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It was number 10. Ooh, too low. Uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or a Beautiful Mind? Beautiful Mind. Beautiful Mind. Yeah. Beautiful Mind. Yeah. Um, Andre the Turtle asks, "What do you think is the most underrated and overrated Pixar movies?" Ooh, um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a lot of crap for my uh, overrated. Uh, I already know what you're gonna say. It's gonna hurt my feelings. Uh, Probably overrated. I'd say Inside Out, Ratatouille. Ooh. Oh, I love Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Gotcha. Underrated. I'm going to say. I don't know how underrated it is, but I'll just say there isn't uh, really underrated. They're either yeah, loved yeah. or well. I mean, I mean, oh, there are there are under. I think they're I think they're underloved. But I would maybe Monsters Inc. But then if but oh, my yeah. new answer may be Pizza. Onward because I don't think everyone's getting it. Oh, is Onward Pixar? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then Onward would be my underrated. I think that was really great. Yeah. And I think and especially because of the timing, it's probably going to be underrated eventually. Yeah. Overrated for me though is Toy Story Four. Oh, you monster! It is yeah. a terrible I, movie. I almost want to say like Toy Story Two is underrated, but the the love is so spread out for um, it that I I think that no, I think that's an appropriate answer actually. Then I'm gonna say Toy Story Two is underrated. It, it's the, and then overrated. Brace yourself. I know he's gonna say Finding it. Nemo. Oh, 
Oh no! Oh, uh, really? oh, I didn't think you were gonna say that. I actually, what, what did you think I was gonna say? I thought you were gonna say Coco. No, I love uh, Coco. Coco is, well, Coco is my number uh, six Pixar movie. Yeah. Um, Finding Nemo. You know what? I, listen, I think it's great, and I and I still believe that. I don't know if it has aged as great. And I, you know, what? actually, I think Finding Dory ruined it a little bit. I think the yeah, existence of Finding, Finding Dory. Dory really hurt it. I, I have this, like, so I rank them, and Ratatouille, Monsters, Inc., and Finding Nemo are my 14, 13, 12. They're just, like, right there in the middle because they're good. I have no problem with them, but I didn't, like, fall for them as all-timers in the way that some people just consider them parts of their childhood. I wasn't a kid necessarily, so there are, it didn't hit there, me in the same time. There, there are 22 Pixar movies, so what's the – I mean, I guess any Cars movie, right? It's going to be the worst. Uh, the bottom five is pretty easy. It's Cars it's, 2, it's Brave, it's Cars, it's Monsters University, it's Cars 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And they're, and, and they're watchable. Like, they're all watchable. I think I throw a Bug's Life down there, too. I, I, uh, Bug's Life is next in line. 17. Yeah, and then a good dinosaur is 16. All right, so, Dory is so 15. Wait, so, then they're all, right, all good. So, so, let, so getting rid of all the Cars, right? Because that's easy, yes. right? And getting rid of the Finding Dory Monsters University sequels, right? Because those yes. are easy to whatever. Yeah. Then what is the worst? Brave. And I don't Brave, know. I don't know if I agree with that though. But it, Brave actually, and no, a Bug's Life. Yeah, Brave, Brave, Brave and a Bug's Life. And then the Good Dinosaur, and they're all fine. Like Brave yeah. is the least of them. I think a Bug's Life is fine, and the Good Dinosaur is so beautiful. To look at that, I, it papers over. Yeah, I kind of, I still kind of like. The, I still kind of like the good dinosaur. It's kind of, it's such a weird mix. It's one of, the, it's the only one I ever felt the way that Pixar sometimes will like pick up and change their plot midway through. The way that like yeah. Toy Stories have had that. Like it is half kind of cutesy movie I don't care about with the kid, and then half like surprisingly dark survival tale. Um, Mark, you started to say something at the beginning, and I think I'm a little bit agree with you. I'm gonna go back to it. Uh-oh. Inside Out is a, is a tad overrated. Yeah, that I, that was my first instinct to go yeah. to go with that one because it's just one that I never liked that everybody seemed to love. I, 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 Toy Story I four and that's me. the thing I liked it. I didn't love like because yep. I, yeah, I, I like I, something that I just read, like you know when you read so many people's stuff like it was Chris Tapley's number one of the year. It, yeah. like his top two were Inside Out and Anomalisa, and I was like, "Oh my yeah. god, those are just those." Yeah, are, Matt, Matt's, I, Matt Singer I, named his daughter after the movie. Like people love this movie. I, I know it's just like I think it's really good. It's in my top I, ten, I think, I think, but I, I think guess it counts as overrated. I think it's a really great concept that isn't executed mm. to its potential. I wonder. If, I wonder if we also are are a little mad at it because we love Anomalisa so much. No, no, it's not. Uh, for me, no, that's not. That's, I hate it on Amelisa as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Mark doesn't have joined his life. Well, that's that's just not yeah. a Mark. Listen, that's not a lot of people movie. That Anomalisa is that's very true. I can understand why people don't like Anomalisa like way more I, than I can understand people understand. who don't like Inside Out. I still Out. hate them for it. Yeah. Um, um, Andre also asked us, considering the situation happening around the world, what is the one movie you guys would recommend to lift everyone's spirits? I don't know why it just came to my head as soon as I read it. A League of Their Own. I don't know why. I just think that's a really good movie to get you pumped up for yeah, something. Real, I'd real, recommend. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Joey. No, no, you can go. You I, was go to all that. I was just going to recommend a really happy film for this period, which would be Contagion. It's a Steven yes. Soderbergh film. I would really recommend everyone see that. Maybe Outbreak is another one that would they they both make made my, feel good. my top ten pandemic movie list that I did for the site, Mark. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Though, though, wait, I was curious now, Mark. What do you? What would you? Yeah. So off the list, I'm curious what you consider yes or no because I had to tinker with it because yeah. obviously you could just do zombies and that's kind of boring. Oh yeah, but uh, so Children of Men. That's a pandemic movie. You're right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because sure. it's just no children as opposed to like a virus. Right. Yeah. Uh, Twenty eight days later, because it's yes. a hybrid. All right, good. So yep. you're on. You're on there with my list. I don't. Well, like, I don't like Twenty Eight Days Later. Oh, I, I love Twenty Eight Days it. Later. Yeah, Twenty Eight like, Weeks Later was all right, but Twenty Eight Days fair. is pretty good. I would have watched Twenty Eight Months Later. I would have watched the third movie. I was down <laughs> for the idea. Um, you know what's? You know what was? You'll feel old. Somebody commented in the comment section mark that they didn't had never heard of the Andromeda Strain. Oh no, Michael Creighton! It's the OG pandemic movie. Yeah, 
Uh, randomly, yeah. just fun movie for people to watch. Real genius. Okay. Oh, Greg, yeah. uh, Greg Kinnear? No. No, that's Val, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Wait, what, what am I thinking of? What genius movie am I thinking of Greg Kinnear? You're thinking of Flash of Genius. Where yeah, there, there you wipers. go. <laughs> I knew, and I was like, there is a genius movie that mentions Greg Kinnear in there that, somewhere. That's a completely average movie. Real Genius is yeah. one of the best comedies ever made. Um, My favorite Martha Coolidge movie. Yeah, uh, Joey's list here. Uh, Slither, The Bay, Planet Terror. Gross. Uh, it's still a pandemic. Outbreak, World World War Z. Also gross. Twelve Monkeys. Twelve Monkeys on earlier today. The Andromeda Strain. Twenty eight days later. Children of Men and Contagion. Contagion's also overrated in my wonderful. I love. I loved Contagion when it came out, and I it's prophetic now at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, what's crazy is the thing I hated about the movie. So I really liked the movie. I had one thing I didn't like. I didn't like the Jude Law part at all at the time. And now you're watching like, oh, he's just Alex Jones. Like took notes watching this part. <laughs> so that part came true. Like yeah. the idea of someone profiting off a pandemic. He's perfect for that. Yeah. You know, and I actually didn't didn't love the ending at the time. But watching it now is like, no, I need I need Matt Damon's daughter like getting to have her prom at this point. Yeah. Considering millions of people have just died. Yeah. Like it, it works really well. I, I there's something about Soderbergh making a big movie that he's just oddly well equipped for for being at his core like a very indie filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, can I just send some real quick thoughts and love, man, to seniors in high school and college, man, that are going to miss out on graduation, prom. A particular shout out to my nephew, Miles, who is a senior at Syracuse and is going to miss his graduation. And that, like, I, I I didn't think so much about those things at first when I, when yeah. school got canceled. And then, I re- and then I thought about it. And then I started thinking about, like, seniors in, like, high school that are going to have prom. They're not going to have prom now. So it's just something that's going to like, you know, that it's a big moment, you know, that you're going to miss yeah. out on. So just, I mean, love, I don't man. need the, I don't need those YouTube videos of people complaining about it, but it's definitely <laughs> no, a, a I, bad I, thing. I, this is the one time I'm letting, I think it's fine that people are having like, or have an outlet like YouTube and stuff like that to just like, I mean, listen, it's not going to be for everyone. And obviously there's bigger problems, but for a 17 yeah. year old in high school, this is going to, feel significant for them i'm just gonna like kind of let them i mean i always excuse i excuse 17 year olds for thinking the world revolves around them because when you're 17 it does but Mm. yeah it's it's more just stated yeah yeah, it's a bad look when you're like oh people are dying but i didn't get to go get laid on prom night but at the same time when you're 17 that's literally the most important thing yeah i mean yeah it is what it is but yeah all right uh steve uh has some as a great uh kind of multi-question thing here Question for the next episode. Has there ever been a time where you had a lineup in any year that matched five for five with the Academy? Uh, he matches 2007 <laughs> supporting actor uh, Casey Affleck, Bardem, Hoffman, Holbrook, and Wilkinson. Um, Ugh, I think I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to probably say there's no chance. No, I know that I definitely have one. And I think I know. I think I can go exactly back to it. I think it is. <sighs> I'm going to make sure if I'm right, because I think that's what it is. If there's going to be one for me, it's going to be far, far enough back that I've only seen those five. Oh, here it is. 2009 director lineup. Bigelow, Cameron, Daniels, Reitman, Tarantino. Four. I get rid Do- of Daniels. Yeah, like, I that that is, I think that's the only time. You wouldn't put Spike Jones ahead of, ahead of someone in that list? No. No, I, I like I, it's, Jones is close, but I think that's the maybe the one time. No, that, that's four that they, or five that they, that they got it. Like, but absolutely no, right. Uh, Spike Jones and uh, Mark Webb would be in there for me. So if I can go four. I could sacrifice one, but not two. But yeah, I would dump Cameron and Daniels. Yeah, and then can, it would be can, a perfect list. Mark, Mark, can you think? Uh, I would think Mark no, might have like not off the top of my hand. But, I, I, I think I mean, it's you have to do some say. research. But I, I, I feel yeah. like Mark, you'd be close to maybe having one. Maybe I think it Could comes it. back again. The we would probably have to go back into years where we've only seen mostly just what's nominated. The 2005 Best Picture lineup is probably the closest thing off the top of my head that I could see have been mm. equal to my five. Okay. Yeah. Let me look at that real quick. Yeah, picture will never line up. 
It's too many like odd things. So my, like. my oh no, forget it because I had Sin City top five that year. Mm. See, really? So yeah, you're Sin, number you're, four. You're Sin City. Bro? I love Sin City. I don't like Sin City. That Ugh, and you, I love it. I swear to God, this is like Twilight Zone. I swear to God, I would think it would be opposite of you two right now. I would think that yeah, yeah. Joey would have loved it and Mark would have despised it. That I was the like first it. movie I watched, and yeah. I hated the sequel. Yeah, the sequel sucked. The spirit is the worst of every of everything. Yeah, that, those are. I didn't like either one of those two, but the first yeah. one I loved so much. I I watched. I made it my first movie in my movie room that I watched in my old house when I had it all set up. I I used that as the premiere film. And this time it was La La Land. <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember. I think it was Lord of the Rings actually. Ah, yeah. In the new house. Uh, ninety seven best best pictures also kind of close, like in some ways, but. Like it now because nah, actually no, it's not. Never mind. It's like three no. or five. I, I I really don't think I'm going to find a five. Yeah, I, I I think that was the only time I had a five that was close. So I think that's think that's it there. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, now that the Oscar decade concluded with Roger Jink, uh, rather Roger Dink. Oh God, Roger Roger D- Jenkins. Roger Deakins winning. Roger D Jenkins winning winning two and Chivo winning three. Who do you think is now the most overdue cinematographer for an Oscar? Uh, mm. I think Rodrigo Prieto off the top of my head. That That's the first one that came to mind. I think he's like kind of next in line. But there are some great ones that like haven't got enough love well, that are going to. Uh, Hoyt Van Hoytema, I think, is He is would great. be mine. Uh, Jeff Cronin with? Uh, Greg Frazier is great. Yeah. Um... Rachel uh, Morrison, right? Rachel Morrison, uh, Stefan Fontaine. Uh, and Dar- wait, I- who did who did the cinematography for um, your your movie? Uh, I mean, I mean, Bradford Young is the uh, is the oh James yes oh uh, yeah Brad, that's what, Bradford that's, James Laxon. Are you talking about Moonlight? No, I'm thinking of Bradford Young for uh, what the hell's the movie? Selma Arrival. Oh God! Maybe I'm so, wrong movie. What's Arrival? Selma, ain't nobody wait, saying. Hold on, wait, let let him talk, Joey. <laughs> what's let him the get second out of movie? Wait, what? You, what what's if what's the movie he talk? made? Yes, who did this? James James, James Laxon. Laxon. That's maybe who. Yeah, Mark. Saying. That's the uh, cinematographer of Tusk and Yoga Hosers, by the way. Oof. He does <laughs> Kevin Smith, and uh, and he also does um, Barry Jenkins movies. Go figure. It's an odd combo. Never to be heard from again. Um, let's see. Ben Di- I think Brad for Young is the answer. Yeah, I like Brad for Young. Uh, I mean, Rog- I mean, I think Rodrigo Prieto, based on like his filmography. I think we don't compromise and say Hoyt Van Hoytema. Actually, Darius Wolski doesn't even have a nomination yet, which is kind of crazy. He did The Martian, yeah. Crimson Tide, Sweeney Todd. Uh. Wow. He does. He does James Gray movies, I believe. Sometimes, Dark City, The Crow. Yeah, how has Terry Twolski not get a nomination yet? That's crazy. Um, who else? Uh, Robert Elswood has his Oscar already. Robbie Ryan is climbing the charts a bit. Robbie mm. Robbie did um, Marriage Story. He did the favorite, favorite. and he's he's kind of doing some all right stuff. Um. I just want to, I know there's a few. Oh, Matthew uh, Libatique also. Yeah, yeah, I could get on he's, board with him being the one. He, he's due for some love soon. Um, Edward Grau, this, what is? Nah, he's good, but eh. let me see. He did Buried. He did a single man. He did Suffragette. He did Her. Uh, let's see. Is there anyone else on here? Claudio Miranda has his Oscar. Dan Lauston has his. Wait, Hoyt Van Hoytema did her. Oh, I mean, he was on the camera crew. Never mind. He, he yeah, was on was the like, crew. Wait, wait, wait. He, he didn't do uh, wait, hold on. Bruno Debonel. Oh. He did Inside Lewin Davis. Yeah, that's a huge one. Yeah. He did Inside Dar- Darkest Hour, Harry Potter, and the Half Blood Prince. All right, uh, you have me at Bruno. Uh. <laughs> He did Amelie. 
He did. A there ver- certainly a very is long another engagement. wave of cinematographers besides Deacons and Chivo. We've established that. Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Yeah, I think my I think my answer is Bruno. I think he's the most overdue. And, yeah. then, and then it's Rodrigo. Same. Yeah, I think that's a good and Bradford yeah. Young. That'd be my and top Bradford, three. Yep. Yeah. Hoyt, Bradford, Libatique. I'll make those my top three. Uh let me see. Rodrigo. He has only three. Oh my god, this like is crazy. Brokeback Mountain. He should have won for Brokeback Mountain. Silence, he yeah. should have won also. And the Irishman last year. Not science. Uh, did the Homesman? He did both of Wall Street. Did Argo? Beautiful. Did Wall? I oh, know he's a great. It's a great did, cinematographer. Did, did Wall Street? Money never sleeps. Did Lost Caution? Said, oh, Lost Caution. He also said the Homesman, and I skipped over that for a reason. Oh, he also did Alexander. Sorry. Alexander, by the way, is one of the greatest trailers of the two thousands, and I hundred percent mean that. It made it look like it was going to win 30 Oscars. You predicted 30 Oscars at the time. Yep. Uh, Steven Prusikowski asked, what films would you recommend to the masses as an escape from the current madness 70s, uh, 80s uh, decades, though? I mean, if you haven't seen I would say, listen, if yeah. you haven't seen it, then it's in the 70s, then you should watch. Like, So if you've never seen Network, <laughs> go watch mm-hmm. a Network. Um, taxi driver. Oh God, they've all seen taxi there's, driver. Yeah, there's. Let's let's go with some sleeper ones. Because then I'll go back to I'll go back to ones. Real Genius, 1985. Okay. Um, if you've never seen the Warriors, watch the Warriors. It's so fun. Oh God, it's so fun. Um, let's Marathon see. Man. I don't know. Have, have many people seen Marathon Man? That's no. A great- I, I, I'd suspense argue. thriller. Yeah, I don't think they. Th- yeah, yeah, Roy Scheider and Dustin Hoffman and um, Lawrence Olivier plays the Nazi dentist. Yep. Is it safe? Game. Yeah, is it safe? Um, I don't think enough people have seen Mash. I don't think oh, it's yeah. like, I don't think it's like well seen. I'd, Another, I'll, I'll give you. I'd also argue go see Love Story. Actually, also not Love Story. Oh. That's not what I meant. Uh, coming, no, no, don't, don't see no, 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 no. Love Story. Um, coming home. Oh, coming coming home's home's much yeah. better than Love Story. Yeah, yes. coming home. Um, two, I'll give you two from master directors: The Conversation, Coppola's uh, mm. film with Gene Hackman, yeah, and uh, Scorsese. One of I think Scorsese's most underrated. Alice doesn't live here anymore with uh, Ellen Burstyn. Yeah, Ellen Burstyn's uh, uh, Oscar. The King of Comedy is my underrated Scorsese. I think that used to be, but I think that's like that's, surged up a lot. Yeah, of that, yeah. It's like, that's not underrated at all. People like don't shut up about King of Comedy. It's funny that people finally watched it. The only time I've ever heard like an underrated like movie finally get properly rated. Like most of the time, something stays underrated because it's cool to be underrated. Yeah. Um. You know what I'm going to watch uh, this week that I've, I said to myself I'm going to watch? It's funny that Steven asked this question. I've never seen it. Uh, a Touch of Class. I want to watch mm. it. I have it. I can't wait till we get to uh, an era before when we make you watch Casablanca. I'm not going to watch it until <laughs> the end. The you end. bastard. It's my number the one end. ever. Uh, is, it, it. is it your favorite film of all time? Of all time. Of all time. Of all time, it's my number Doesn't one. that make you a little more curious what could possibly be in there? No. And what's making it crazier? It's Mark's favorite movie. <laughs> no, no. And there's n- it's Mark's favorite movie and there's no nudity in it. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> Rare. Um I you know what I you know I think people it, it's not criterion and I don't think enough people probably have seen it. Uh Barry Lyndon. I think yeah, people should true. make some time for. Yeah. yeah. Uh I'm trying to look for some stuff I really want to watch that like I haven't. That's that's seen. probably what I would say. That's what I'd say. I'd, I'd pair your Kubrick pick with the Coppola and Scorsese pick and say, go to your favorite directors of all time mm-hmm. and oh, go yeah. seek out maybe the movie that you've missed from them. Yeah. yeah. Right? That might be the way to, to handle that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Have I, uh, Mar- yeah, I've never seen Marathon Man. It's really I good. I don't think I have. It is really good. I, I might have seen it when I was younger, but not that it's uh, jumping out to me right now. Uh, an unmarried woman's get going the Criterion. I'm so excited. So now I can get rid of the stupid DVD I have of it and get a Blu-ray. I'm gonna be really excited. You know what's a you know what I like from the 70s a lot that I don't think a lot of people have seen the Candidate. Oh, that's good. Is that the Redford? 
Yeah, it has yeah, a great a ending. Yeah. It, has a set, it has an all-timer of an ending. Ooh, an- another underrated... Uh, it's funny, I think it's underrated because it got nominated for Best Picture. I don't think people have seen it as a whole. Uh, Breaking Away. Breaking Away's pretty good. I don't think anyone's really seen it. Uh, I'm even going to go... Cause I know it was about the... Um, I know it was about the 70s, but I mean, you should. we should recommend other years as well. But in the 60s, like, if you haven't given yourself the joy of watching The Odd Couple, please watch The Odd Couple. Yeah. 68. It's, it's, it's my, it's in my top 10 greatest films of all time. I think it's the greatest comedy ever. See, I, I prefer a different comedy from 1968, though I agree that The Odd Couple is amazing. I, I actually am very partial to yours, mine, and ours. Mm. Yeah. Which uh, holds up. Like, if you, even today, is hilarious. Oh, uh, I, lo- sh- I love it. Sh- shout out to Robert Hamer, because I, I don't think I've seen this in a really long time. I might make some time for it, because I have the criterion for it. Uh, Z. Mm. Uh, Mark, do you, do you like In the Heat of the Night? Absolutely. Uh, it's probably, like, my fourth favorite that year. But no. that's <laughs> when was, great, when was that's the last time you though. watched it? In the heat of the night, probably like two years ago or so. I, okay, so you've seen it recently. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I know that I've seen that movie yeah. like twenty I, times. I, yeah. I hate Rod Steiger's win for it. It's just awful. Really? Yeah. Oh my it's god, awful. it's preposterous. Hey, I love Rod Steiger though, so I, I, I can't hate on it. Um, I I'm trying. To the think. Graduate was my my favorite from that year. Sixty same. Uh, same. Uh, I think I'm gonna watch. I mean, granted, granted okay. that you were graduating high school at the time, but still. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to make time for Ship of Fools because I've never seen Ship of Fools. I have it though now. Um. Oh, uh, my Oscar collection, Mark. You'd be excited. I just completed because you know I have all my Oscar Best Picture winners and nominees in year order. I have right. just completed uh, 1941 because uh, I ordered Sergeant York and it just came in. So I have Sergeant oh. York now. Yeah, um, I like that movie. Gary 19, 1940, I completed two weeks ago because I got the long voyage home, which is going to be on um, TCM I tonight. I, I, I put it to record on TCM because I haven't seen it. Uh, I'm going to watch it. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen that yeah, either. 39, I have completed. Uh, 38, I, I just completed. I got Pygmalion now. So that year is complete on my wall. Uh, 37, I'm still missing Dead End. I need to go buy. Uh, 100 Men and a Girl in Stage Door. I've never seen those. Uh, a lot of the, thir- the early stuff is so hard to find and get and get again. It's like really hard. And then it's going to be hard to even watch some of them because I'll never forget the first time I watched Calvacade. <sighs> so bad. I, I, it was like the first time I was like, what was Oscar doing in their lifetime? But then yeah. I but then I look at their other lineup of that year and I can't like like I I, I haven't seen Forty Second Street in, in like a really really long time so I can't even comment on it so much and I think I've seen Private Life of Henry the Eighth because it's in a Criterion pack but I don't remember it too much but I also got the first Little Women I'm gonna watch that because I haven't seen that one the one with Hepburn yeah, yeah. right have you seen that one Mark oh well, which one was it Sorry. Hepburn's Little Women the thirty three no, I don't think I've seen that version. No. Mm. Uh, have you guys? Let's see. Oh, uh, just talk about some good uh, stuff. You guys seen recently? Gaslight. Not I recently. Love Gaslight. I mean, I saw The Invisible Man, which is a movie about <laughs> gaslighting. Yeah. Uh, Anchors Away. I've never seen Anchors Away. I'm looking forward to seeing That's that. That's a classic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bell of St. Mary's. I just got the Blu-ray for it. Because it came, it came out. That's so. the sequel to Going My Way. Uh, yes. Bing Crosby's in it. <laughs> yes, I believe yep. so. Yeah, Best Picture winner, nineteen forty-four. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else. What else here? I've never seen The Razor's Edge. Uh, Ooh. that's forty-six. That's uh, Gene Tierney, John Payne, and Baxter. But have you seen? But have you seen the remake? What's the remake? Is it, is, it called the, is it called the Razor's Edge? Yes. Oh, no. Hang on. Let me look this up. Am I crazy? Did I have a, did I have a stroke? Hang on. Yeah. Um, 
No, they remade it in 1984 with uh, Bill Murray. Oh, um, I think I'm gonna. I, I I think I started I started rewatching it last year, and I need to come back to it. I started rewatching Johnny Belinda, and Johnny Belinda was a lot better than I remembered. Uh, let's see. Joey, are you a fan of the original Father of the Bride? 1950. My family likes it more than I do, but it's it was cute. I I wasn't super wild about the remake, mind you. But this one, it was fine. I probably prefer the original. Mark, how much does High Noon mean to you as a human? Um, <laughs> it's a forty on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> that that tracks for him. Does Gary Cooper's Oscar win hold? Oh hell yeah! Like that, that, that's, I mean, that's, that, that's the one of the lineup. That's my number one Western of all time. Is it really? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Really? I and am. it was President Clinton, I believe's favorite movie of all time. That's someone that you it, should be aligning yourself Clinton with right or, now. It was, either Cl- <laughs> it was one of the presidents. I forget who said that. It was I mean, well, Clinton. Mark, and, Mark and him share a fondness. They share a fondness for certain things. Dude, that's, it's know. such a great movie, though. It's so good. I mean, it's clearly the actor winner for me. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, let, let, let me let me let me ask you, Mark. I'm, I'm gonna give you a few westerns. You tell me if yeah. uh, if well, give me the star ratings for them, and if you recommend them or not. Yeah. And then, then Joey, you and I can scoff because I know we're gonna share probably some distaste on some of these. Uh, Un- Unforgiven. Oh, absolutely. And four stars. Two and a half. Uh, Three. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, hell yeah. Four stars. Three and a half. Three and a half. Once Upon a Time in the West. Four stars. Three? Three. The Searchers. Four stars. Uh, Two and a half. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I think you're right on four. I think you know, I, I like that's the Searchers. Scorsese's, that's Scorsese's number one yeah. film of all time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of people's. It, there's a really interesting unspooled episode on it. Like, it. There's a lot of good points. I liked it better before I listened to it. They <laughs> they bring up how problematic it is. Uh, the Wild Bunch. Four stars. Peck and Paw. Three. Classic. I think it's three, too. Uh, Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid. Oh, hell yeah. Four stars. Three and a half. Four. Uh, Stagecoach. Three. Four stars. I'm going to say three. Three. That's, that's the film that made John Wayne a star. Yeah. So I, I, I'm oh, whatever. It's... In, the, in that case, two. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> four, sh- four for me. Shane. Oh my god, I love Shane. I, I, Shane is probably the one western that, if you asked me the first time I saw it, I'd say two and a half stars. Uh-huh. But when I came back to it, uh, and ever since, four, hmm. three and a half. I, I think I'm four. Um, Liberty Valance. Three and a half. I don't. Th- three I don't know if I've seen it in like in its entirety. I'm not sure. I think I saw. I saw it once. That's a good three. Movie. Uh, Red River four. Oh, I love Red, Red River. Red River's four. Red River's three, three and a half. I have, yeah. I, have the, I have the criterion. It is wonderful. Yeah. I, I guess I'd be four. It'd be, it'd be between three and a half and four, but that's a great one. Uh, the Shootist? Two and a half. Two and a half. Uh, wait, that's the that's the old shoot. There's a new Shootist, right, with Ron Howard? Or am I thinking of the something else? The one with John yeah. Wayne. Yeah, the one with John Wayne. What's the new one with Ron Howard that I'm thinking of? Is that just a remake of it? I or is that just know. something else? Oh, whatever. I think it is thinking of something else. I think. All right. Um, no Country for Old Men. Is it a Western? Yeah. I, I don't consider it a Western, but I get a four stars. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a neo-Western, the same way that, like, Logan yeah. is and a lot of... And or Hell or High Water. Copland, Hell or High Water. Hot Copland to me is a Western. Those, those aren't I, Westerns. I don't, uh, I I don't think it's a Western. I give it three and a half, but I don't, I don't is, think it's a Western. Western no is Country's a period. Three and a half. Do, Western for me is a period. Do you think well, that's why you call it neo West. Yeah. West? yeah. Okay. Young Guns. Oh, I okay. love Young Guns. Probably three. They have three. Two and a, two and a half. Tombstone. Yeah. Three and a half. Oh, I love. Yeah, three and a half for Tombstone. Three. I love Tombstone too. That's a that's a miss on um, Val Kilmer's Oscar Val nomination. Val Kilmer, my yeah. God, for he, sure. He rocks it, man. Uh, Dances yeah. with Wolves. Four. I love it, and I don't care what two point seven five. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's really three, but I understand it's that a lot of people so, hate it. It is so good, and I think people hate it because it beat Goodfellas, and that's the only uh, reason they. Hate it. So you think I wonder, I wonder if I like two. it better because I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah. do. 
Oh, I'm sorry. And King's Speech, King's Speech, King's Speech is a prequel. Listen, actually. listen, I yeah. lived, I lived through through Dances with Wolves. Okay, you lived like, through I, it. I, I, I was, I mean, <laughs> the, I was the 14 in when which it took place. Came out. That was a big, big. Movie. Can I also? Say, oh my God! Just speaking of Dances with Wolves, real quick, um, because of Kevin Costner. Literally the other day, Waterworld was on, and I, it was like the, <laughs> la- it was like the last like 15 minutes. Oh. Holy hell! Like, yeah, it's better. even even for the like, it's just like wow. Like I don't know yeah. where all the money was spent. What what it was spent on either? Was, See, on, was on it the water? Kevin, Dennis Hopper, Kevin Costner, Boondoggles. I'll take the Postman. <laughs> um, assassination yeah, of Jesse James, thirty thousand stars. Uh, three and a half. Yeah, three, three and a half. True Grit, the new one, Jeff Bridges one. Three, two and a half. Um, Django Unchained. Three and a half. It's like it's like borderline four until the last like forty minutes. Mm. So I give it three, three, maybe two and a half. Uh, Little Big Man. Oh my god, four! I love that movie. Uh, that's a great one for three. anybody. Anybody that hasn't seen, we kind of talked about these movies. This is that's one I would highly recommend anybody that's never. It's a long one. Yeah, it's an epic, but it's it's pretty fantastic. Uh, the, three, the length the length drags it down. The Alamo. The Three. one from 2000 and whatever? No, the John, no, no the, the John old, the old oh, one. I was like, God damn, the, please don't. The 1961. Because <laughs> that one's like one and a half. Yeah, yeah no, this the John Wayne one is, is good and worth seeing. This one's three. Uh, guilty Pleasure Alert, Geronimo, an American legend. The one from 93. Yeah. It's, uh, it's three. But three, it's, it's, two, yeah. but two, but three, two like and a half. I like it I was a kid when I watched it. I thought it was like really great. Sure, sure. Uh, Heaven's Gate? Two and a half. I don't know that I've seen Heaven's Gate. Mm. It's beautiful to look at. It's very boring. Uh, o- okay. Open Range. Oh, three. I love Open Range. Yeah, three three sounds right. Yeah, two. I don't think I. Oh. I, 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 wow. I, I like. I was it. very bored by it. I think I think I just love Costner, and I think the shootout once it starts going, yeah. it takes yeah. a while to build it, but once it gets there, it's pretty it's pretty fantastic. But, yeah, Kevin Costner in that period is phenomenal. Yeah. So, uh, yep. Slow West. Three and a half. <laughs> three and a half. <laughs> Uh, two and a half. Ah, uh, it's good. Fastbender, uh, man. Good. Uh, Karen. Yeah. Uh, P- Pretorius. I think it's her name. Uh, the Big Country. Two and a half. Three. Uh, the Oxbow Incident. I haven't seen that in too long. I w- I wouldn't be able. To. I don't think I've seen it ever. Yeah, it's I have been so a long know. time ago. Thirty years. Uh, is the Revenant a western? Yeah, I think you could setting, say that. Setting-wise, no, but it's, period well, and, t- and plot-wise, yes. I think it's still a Western because it's, you know, you know it's not, not to the state frontier. the obvious. It's in the, it's in the West. It's the it's the yeah. frontier. There's still wild Native Americans and it just and It just has whatnot. CGI, and I think that is, it has special yeah. effects, and I think that's what throws yeah. people off, I think, sometimes. That's fair. It's not, anyway, it's two, not cowboys, but it's, it's yeah. settlers and Indians. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, and I give it three and a half. I so I, I really like the Revenant. Four stars for me for right. Revenant. Um, last one, Hostiles. Oh hell yeah, four stars! <laughs> God damn, three I love Hostiles. or three and a half. Uh, I forget where I was. Uh, um, I think it's three and a half, but I think I really mean it's four. Uh, I have to rewatch it. I, I rewatch it. I know. I, 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 I've watched so it twice, and good. like, and I, I still not great on the ending, but it is. It's, so, oh my god, it's so it's so great. It made it made my top twenty of the decade. Oh, really? I nice. love that movie. Yeah. yeah, it was my number two of that year. In, in my it's, top it's twenty, ho- of the Hostiles, Mary Queen of Scots, all like movies that like literally surged up after I saw it the first time. Like every time I kept thinking yeah. about all my favorite films of that year, I was just like, wait, no, I loved it more. I loved it more. I loved it more. And then it like climbed up. What about both versions of Three Ten to Yuma? I Ooh. both are great actually. I'd argue that one both of the are rare, great. one of the rare remakes that I actually prefer over the yes. original. I, I'd they're, agree both three, they're both three stars, but the remake is like a little three, bit better. I'd go three and a half on the remake. I, I, go three, I, I swear, it. James Mango, neo noir, because he also made Copland, also made Logan. Like th- that is his wheelhouse. He, yeah. um, it's three and a half as well. I think the weak link of the movie actually is Christian Bale. Oh what? Yeah, I think he's. Wow. The, I think he's the weak. Because I, I, I think Russell Crowe's great. I think Ben Foster is fantastic. Oh my god! Um, All three. Ben Foster is best in show. Ben, yeah, yeah, Ben Foster. Um, best in show. I think it. I 
uh, Marco Beltrami's score is awesome. And I think uh, Papa Michael's cinematography is great. Bale's, like, just, like, I, I think his character just doesn't um, come off the page as much. I, I, I don't, I think it's one of the rare times I think Bale, like, reserved, like, like held it back too much. And mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think, I think he, he needs to rub it up probably more so. I like him better than you, but that's fair. Yeah. Um, all right. I think that's all I have on Western stuff. <laughs> I do love the Western genre, though. I know. That, well, is, yeah, a, but, that is a great favorite favorite of mine. That and sci-fi. Big fan. Have you seen? We can do sci-fi next week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you seen My Darling Clementine? Oh, hell yeah. That's yeah. a great one. Do you like... Henry uh, Fonda? Yeah. Do you like How the West Was Won? Not terrifically. No. How do you feel about the Olsen twins movie, How the West Was Fun? <laughs> oh, my God. Is that is that? Of it's, course it's, it is. I swear it's real. It's that 100% is, real. Of course it's real. That is fantastic. Do you prefer that or to Grandmother's House We Go? Uh, <laughs> Ooh, I don't have any idea. Do you, know, do you know what I kind of don't like? Oh, this is going to be really unpopular. People are going to punch me for it. Uh, mm-hmm. Magnificent Seven. Oh, I love. Well, yeah. which one? The, the six. The, the six. Renner? The nineteen sixty. Yeah, the, re, I love, the, re, the I remake love the sucks. The yeah, remake sucks. Garbage. Yeah, the remake was miserable. Yeah, the original is good. You know what? You meant, uh, didn't mention either that I think. I know this is this one probably goes either way for people, but I liked uh, Bone Tomahawk. I love Bone oh, Tomahawk. Oh, Bull Pullman. Like, that was brutal. Yeah, the one with uh, Kurt Russell where. Wait, is that Kurt Russell? Is that Bill Pullman? No. Or am I thinking, am I, Bill thinking Pullman. Of, I think it's Bill, Kurt Russell. It's Bill, it's Bill, Bill Pullman. Bill, is it Bill Pullman? Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, why did I think it was Kurt Russell? No, nope. it's Kurt. It's one hundred percent Kurt Russell. Wrong, wrong white guy. Wrong white guy with beard no, right I, now. I swear, Bone Tom. Let's look it up. Bone Tom. Bone Tom Hawk is is a thousand dollars. Kurt Russell. Yeah, I, think, I thought it. Oh, was. It, it is. It's Kurt Russell. Wait, so who am I thinking with? Who am I thinking with? Bill Pullman. Then you think of something else. Oh, you're thinking of. You're thinking of the A24 movie from The Ballad of Lefty Brown. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Bone, Bone, Tom, Bone Tomahawk has the most violent scene of the last like 20 years. <laughs> it is in. It, I've never seen a scene like that. In, Wait, have you have you not seen his other movies, Mark? As Craig Zoller? I I don't know that I have, but so I he can made, tell you <laughs> he made after this uh, brawl in Cell Block 99 with uh, um, Vince Vaughn. And think of that scene, but that's no. a two and a half hour movie. He goes to jail right. and he has to like fight in a supermax, and it's all that kind of scene. What is you might the... actually like it? He also he Netflix? also he also wrote the new Puppet Master movie that came out that would treat the video. Nice, and he did drive the cross concrete, which is fine, but has the amazing casting of casting Mel Gibson as a racist. Mm. One one more thing, because I want to I want to shout out. Um, if you're looking, if you like westerns and you haven't seen it yet on Netflix, a couple years ago, uh, Jeff Bridges or not Jeff Bridges, um, what's his name? Jeff Daniels had a western series called Godless. Oh it yeah, awesome. it is awesome. So if you like westerns and you want like a series to get into, other than obviously um, Deadwood, you have Godless. I was really hoping you went to another Jeff before you did it, like Goldblum. <laughs> Just started to list <laughs> oh, off the we wrong didn't say Jeffs. Silverado. Yeah. Silverado. So what about, uh, I haven't There's watched it, but I love Taylor Sheridan. What about um? Oh God, uh, was it Yosemite or Yellowstone? His, his he has a Western mm. series. Yeah, I heard made. good things. Yeah. yeah, I heard good things about Yellowstone. Um, last one for the road, also on Criterion: McCabe and Mrs. Miller. Macabre. McCabe, McCabe, McCabe. Yeah, McCabe. I think it's Macabre. Macabre, whatever. Yeah, it's good. That's, uh, that's a good one. Three and a half. Three. I've actually, I've actually never seen it. Yeah, that's that's worth seeing. Yeah. All right. Uh that was a lot, but we unloaded it all. Yeah. But that's good. Good show. Mm-hmm. Good show. Um we're gonna have a lot of just random stuff to talk about over the next few weeks. Uh um, yeah. Fill the time. Steven asked, Do we think that No Time to Die is gonna be the third Bond song in a row to win best song? Maybe. Because yeah. yeah. default. At the moment. It's pr- it's at the moment good. it sure seems like it. Well, there could be something. Isn't what's his name? Uh Sorry, I'm Hamilton. Who's the guy? Lin Win. Lin Win. He's writing songs for In the Heights. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're probably you probably have some st- stiff competition there. Yeah, yeah. And then you have West Side kind of, Story. He, if he they might, have he, might uh, he might EGOT here. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple. Depends on what kind of depends on what kind of mood the Academy will be in for that. And there's uh, that other. Yeah. There's the other one from the guy who played Hamilton. He was in uh, Star Is Born. In um, the Heights. Oh, Anthony. He, oh, that is in the Heights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. never mind that. Uh, okay. Did you guys see Lost Girls on Netflix? 
the Amy Ryan no. movie. Uh, what's yet. it called? You watch it. Lost Girls. It's uh, Liz Garbus's uh, movie. It's it's mm. with Amy Ryan. It, it's it dropped okay. it dropped already. She she's um she's a documentary director. She did the Farm Angola USA and What Happened to Simone. And okay. and it's a true story. I had no idea that even happened right here in New York area uh, through the nineties and two thousands and stuff like that about a serial killer. Um, movie totally could have benefited from being a miniseries. It shouldn't have been a movie. And I actually think Thomas McKenzie's not good in it, and I love her. But Ooh. it's but it's worth but it's worth watching. I love me some Thomas McKenzie, but she is. I know you do. But she is. She she's ill fit for this movie and she needs to work on her American accent. Oh, on a more consistent basis, even though she does it well and like leave no trace and stuff like that. Um, Joey, where can they follow you? At Joey Magazine, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, letterboxd, my apartment. Uh, follow him, uh, with Peter Finch's Oscar win for network. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll take it. Good one. Yeah. Uh, Mark, where can they follow you? I'd actually prefer that people don't follow me right now. I'm practicing my social distancing. Ah, true. Nice. So, nice. No, I'm, <laughs> you can follow me at Mark Likes Movies. You can follow him uh, with the Peter Finch nominated performance in Sunday Bloody Sunday. Okay. It loses. Uh, That's what we call every time we podcast with Mark. Yep. <laughs> he lost the Oscar to Gene Hackman in The French Connection. I'm happy Hackman has an Oscar. He has two I Oscars. I wonder how he's doing. I'm in general that he has awards. Yeah. How do we how do we think he's doing right now? I think he's hanging on. Yeah. Yeah. Walter Matthau also has a bizarre Oscar for his for his career, the fortune cookie. Yeah. But what would you have given it to him for? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> I mean uh, you laugh, but there's a world in which they might have tried to make that happen. Yeah. I mean I mean I, I think I think Jack Lemon should have won the Oscar for um, Odd Couple. I think he's better than well, Math Out in it. But then you have to. And I'm not committing category fraud because he's not supporting, so he would lose. So then I kind of feel like maybe he doesn't have an Oscar. He might not. Because I'm because I'm okay giving Jack Lemmon the Oscar over Cliff Robertson for Charlie. Yes. <laughs> But then, I like, but, th- but then, I'm fine with Cliff Robertson, but still, yes. But then, you know, you could, Mark m- may want to give it to him. Maybe you give Peter O'Toole his Oscar that same year for Lion in the Winter. Yeah. Ooh, Catherine Hepburn, Lion in the Winter, or Barbara Streisand, Funny Girl? I might go Streisand. Yeah. I actually uh, just came in the mail also yesterday. Uh, I've never seen Alice Adams from 36. It's her second Oscar nomination. Uh, you can follow me at Award Circuit. Download us on Stitcher Radio. Go to awardcircuit.com for all your entertainment news and content. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to continue our Circuit Extras episodes. We're going to have some of us on there and some celebrity talent as well. So look out for them. Are uh, we potentially uh, starting a certain thing that we used to do? Yes, Circuit Madness. Before the world Circuit ended. Ma- Circuit Madness starts this week as well as uh, ACA Best of Decades. Both are ready to go. So nice. we're going to be... Uh, Launching, it's going to be great. And happy birthday, Stephen Sondheim. Day, he's ninety today. That's crazy. Cool. And I think it's uh, uh, Lloyd Webber's birthday too. Yeah, right. They share a birthday. Indeed. Uh, how old is Andrew Andrew Lloyd Webber? Let's find out. Um, Someone. Are we doing it in cat years or are we doing it in human years? Yeah, uh, human years. Uh, human years is 72. Really? It's, it's funny. Yeah. Cause I think so- Stephen Sondheim being 90 seems really excessive to me. Yeah. <laughs> and Andrew Lloyd Webber, I feel like should be like 80, but I mean, Andrew Lloyd, Lo- I was introduced to Andrew Lloyd Webber from the nanny. So it makes about <laughs> as much sense. That That's your introduction like- to him as a person. Yeah. I did. When, when I was a little kid, when not, when would I have been aware of a Broadway production? Uh, you grew up in New York. My parents all, were. My all, parents all, aren't all, interested in culture. It was, it was all over TV. Dude, like I grew, like I used to see. Yeah, I, so, I, I, but they didn't I say see, Andrew uh, Webber. They said cats. I, now and forever. I know. I used to see uh, cats commercials like all the time. 
I don't remember them ever saying him. I remember them saying cats and, now and forever and, at the Winter Garden yeah, Theater. And Phantom of the Opera and Sunset Boulevard. And I never remember his name there. I, I remember tying it together as they said he's the guy from Cats on that show. And then I was like, oh, but I thought he must have, like, directed it. I didn't understand hmm. the idea of, like, Broadway has a different situation than movies. I was focused in on movies. And then and then Evita. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for Word Circuit, I'm Clayton. Practicing social distancing. Stay safe out there. We're going to see you at the movies on netflix and other places netflix hulu uh make make sure you go uh there's trials out there for criterion channel take advantage of all of it right now and also visit a uh, circuit store um and pick up some merchandise because that's still the 19.17 percent off sale still continues mm-hmm. yep all right see you see you at everything bye Circuit Breaker is brought to you by AwardCircuit.com. Just plug in.